Welcome to Harold's in the Heights. My name is Allie Jarrett and I own Harold's Restaurant Bar and Rooftop Terrace. We're located on 19th Street in the Heights in Houston, Texas and we pride ourselves on Southern cuisine and Southern hospitality. So prior to renovating this building in uh, 2013, uh, Harold's in the Heights was a clothing store uh, and it was owned by Harold and Milton Wiesenthal and, uh, and their father at one time. And Harold was in, was in business for 62 years in the clothing business and while he focused ma mainly on, on men's clothing, he did, he did have a women's uh, section as well. I uh, actually knew Harold and, sh and shopped here a few times, so, so that was interesting. And Harold, uh, every, every 15 or 20 years, he would just open up a wall and add on with no rhyme or reason to elevation changes or, or uh, construction. And so this place is a very unique place to operate with a lot of different nuances. And so we were able to save that history with a lot of the, well, a lot of the brick and original things that, that make this building so unique and a little bit challenging to operate a restaurant in it. Uh, we opened in uh, November the 8th of uh, 2013, and so we've been open eight and a half years now, uh, serving the Heights in Houston uh, with our delicious Southern cooking. Well, when, when Harold's was here in the 50s and 60s, uh, you know, 19th Street, really, it was like Main Street. Uh, and he, this whole block was, was booming with local merchants and, and Harold was certainly a huge part of that, owning a lot of the, a lot of the block. Uh, and, and similar to what it is today with uh, a lot of locally owned shops and people that are not only Houstonians but have, have come from other parts of Texas and, and uh, the United States to, to operate their own building right here in the heart of the Heights. Uh, interestingly enough, the Heights was the very first suburb of Houston, and so uh, when it flooded downtown uh, back in the 1800s, people moved here to higher ground. And so uh, uh, Harold's uh, was a, an incredible clothier, uh, making custom-made suits. Uh, and back in the heyday, he had 17 tailors that actually uh, worked for him at one time uh, making clothes. Uh, a lot of interesting things with Harold and uh, through the years and as he grew, uh, he, uh, he was very philanthropic and uh, he actually dressed three presidents in their inaugural suits, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, he also uh, probably clothed just about every big and tall man athlete in, in Houston, uh, from putting jackets on Earl Campbell, uh, also outfitting golfers like Lee Trevino and Jack Nicklaus and John Mahaffey. And, and supporting the neighborhood. Uh, in fact, Harold had a, uh, he started the credit system probably in the Heights for young people. Uh, if they went to uh, Reagan High School at the time, they could come over to Harold and Harold would, would give them a charge account so that they could buy their first suit or their first jacket and, uh, and let them pay it off. And so uh, Harold really did help a lot of young people out through the years and, and uh, uh, we have a lot in common, certainly, with, uh, with not only the, the love of serving others and, and business, uh, but also in the neighborhood and community, and, and especially our love for the game of golf. Uh, Harold has this t-shirt that, and this saying that he would have, and we actually had to have a t-shirt of it, and Harold would say, uh, uh, I dress 70, I talk 80, and I shoot 90 when my putter's hot. Well, I think I got my love for business. Uh, from my growing up in a, in a family business. My family uh, owned and operated a wholesale company called Jarrett Specialty Company, and we were located in King Street, South Carolina, uh, where I was born and raised, and uh, somewhat educated, I like to say. So uh, moving you know, to Houston from a town of, in King Street of 4,000 to 4 million was a little, bit, a little bit different when that happened. But growing up in a family business, you know, we had, my, my granddaddy started out the trunk of his car with $2. And uh, later, my uncle would join him in business, and he won uh, a good bit of money in a poker game coming home uh, on a ship uh, from World War II. 
And uh, my family business was open for 52 years, and we were the largest employer in our county. And uh, I worked, and I grew up as the first job I ever had was when I was six years old growing up in our family business. We warehouse and distributed over 18,000 different items from hunting and fishing tackle, candy, drugs, toys, groceries, health and beauty aids. And uh, in addition to the wholesale uh, component, we also had a retail store. And uh, my grandmother was the only bookkeeper in our business for uh, 48 years. So uh, the similarities of Jarrett's and Harold's are, are, uh, are, are very aligned uh, with the way family works uh, and with the way history works and being active in the community and, and, and being involved in, in, uh, in operations. And certainly, certainly working in business is something that I love very much. Well, the first job I can remember at Jarrett's was uh, my granddaddy coming up to me, and uh, I was around six or seven years old at the time. And uh, in our retail store, uh, he asked me that there was a, there was a customer, um, and apparently she was notorious for uh, taking things that didn't belong to her. So my granddaddy, uh, I guess I was part of loss prevention before that word ever existed with security as a six-year-old child. But my granddaddy, we called him Daddy Bill, and Daddy Bill asked me to uh, follow this uh, customer around and to come get him if she had ever put anything in her pocketbook or in her dress. And uh, I'll never forget it, and she did not take anything on my watch, so I was, I was proud of my accomplishment for that day. Uh, one of the other jobs that I remember, and I remember doing this so clearly with my cousins, uh, back in the day you had to stamp uh, uh, playing cards and uh, he had to use, there were these little pink stamps and each one of them cost three cents a piece. And literally you'd have to wet them and put them on perfectly and if you rip one or broke or tear, tore one, uh, that was money. And that was like throwing money away. And I can remember my, my granddaddy and my uncle uh, coming to check on us on how we were doing and uh, continually reminding us um, that, that every penny was very valuable. And um, when you were when you're putting that stamp on that it needed to be on there just right, not crooked, but straight, and uh, certainly not torn, uh, so that uh, we could do our part in paying our taxes and, and, passing, and passing that along for, uh, for good old Uncle Sam. I think one of the most uh, imp important things that I learned from my family growing up, uh, and, and particularly in a family business, and, and you can apply this to any business, is that every single business has problems. And it doesn't matter what type of business that you're in, there are always going to be obstacles and challenges and, and, and human beings making mistakes. And what I learned from Jarrett's and growing up is that, yes, we made mistakes, uh, but we owned them and we tried to take care of them as quickly as possible. We didn't run from them. And I think now in hospitality, um, it's, you know, it's very critical to that, particularly now with everybody's got their cell phone and, and everybody uh, uh, is so quick to judge. Um, the, the best thing that we can do is own it when we, when we make errors because we are human beings and, and we will make mistakes and try to take care of those problems as quickly as possible and hopefully even before the guest even knows. And I think that was uh, a really important lesson for me growing up um, was, was that's just how it goes. And, and uh, I've learned that over the years and, and continue to practice that today. So one thing that my grandmother always instilled in us was volunteerism. And, uh, and growing up in King Street, you know, she counted money at the church. She uh, was a candy striper in the hospital. And so at a young age, I learned volunteerism. And uh, uh, at the age of 23, I, I played college golf at the University of South Carolina. And at the age of 23, I started volunteering in the game and uh, started volunteering for the United States Golf Association. I think I may have been their youngest volunteer they ever had. And uh, uh, I served on uh, some, some, the committee structure during that. And then I had an opportunity in uh, uh, 1998 uh, to uh, go to work for the USGA. And certainly golf being a passion and it was a good opportunity for me if I was going to move to take that plunge. And, I ended up choosing Houston, Texas because uh, it was hot and uh, I could get home to South Carolina in, in two hours by plane and the people were nice here. And so uh, I went on to work for the United States Golf Association for 14 and a half years uh, as uh, Director of Regional Affairs uh, 
and also uh, ran two of our championships, uh, two different championships for four years stints, the U.S. Girls Junior and the U.S. Mid Amateur for men. And I also did player services at the Women's Open for, for nine years, uh, among working on lots of other different championships and, and uh, working with uh, girls golf and working with uh, uh, the Mexican Golf Federation. And so um, all of those things uh, were a lot of fun and I had a really, really great job and, and a fun job. Uh, but that job also uh, had me on the road 100 nights a year. And uh, so that's one of the things to led to me of leaving the USGA uh, so that I could get back to my roots of uh, family owned business. So one of the things I've remained involved with is the Spirit. And the Spirit is an international amateur golf competition. And uh, this is uh, from one of the wonderful years. In 2013, uh, I was assistant to Paige McKenzie. You might know her now uh, from her telecasting. And actually, Scotty Scheffler played on this team, as well as Allie McDonald. Uh, so uh, a lot of really good players at the, at the Spirit that have, have uh, come through uh, and, and played golf in that international championship, which has been a lot of fun, and we won the gold medal. So uh, in addition to the Spirit, I, I serve on the, the Texas uh, Golf Hall of Fame board and, and have enjoyed remaining a, a part of that, and, and then local things as they come about with the Texas Golf Association and the United States Golf Association. So golf will always be a, a very important part of my life, and uh, I look forward to playing more of it again. So I moved to Houston in 1999 to work for the USGA, and uh, at the time I lived up in, in the woodlands. And uh, uh, only about a year and a half later, I ended up building a home here in the Heights. So I've been in the Heights since 2001, and uh, absolutely love the neighborhood because it reminds me of home. It reminds me of King Street. And so 19th Street, where we're actually located, is really like Main Street where I grew up, except it doesn't have a courthouse uh, on it. That's really about the only difference. And so when I was trying to ponder you know, what I might want to do after the USGA uh, in getting back to my roots of family business, um, originally when I discovered that the location was available, uh, I wanted to have a multi-concept and uh, a concept that had a, a grocery store and neighborhood market component as well as a restaurant to sit around the table and break bread with your friends and neighbors and, uh, and, and enjoy food and beverages. And so that's what originally, originally attracted this, uh, why I was originally attracted to this location, uh, because always kind of in my dreams and in my vision, uh, my house, uh, at the time I lived on 22nd Street, and uh, in the winter I could stand on my balcony and look out and see downtown. And so. Uh, before I even had this location, I wanted an upstairs outdoor rooftop terrace where I could see downtown. Now here at Harold's, we don't see out downtown, but we did renovate and we do have a rooftop, rooftop terrace, which is a really neat place to eat outdoors. And uh, it faces 19th Street, and so you're up in the neighborhood, uh, which is a lot of fun. And uh, so, so that's what led to, uh, to this location and, and uh, having a, a multi-concept component. Um, Certainly a lot of things didn't work with that. And interestingly enough, the things that I knew the most about with regard to, to merchandise and groceries and retail, and uh, that failed, failed quickly. And uh, so we had to quickly uh, uh, drop back and punt and come up with a different game plan. And my dad's always told me, you got to gauge, change, and rearrange. And so that's what we did. And downstairs has actually been three or four different things and uh, as we tried to find the right uh, the right business to operate and upstairs at Harold's uh, has always been the same uh, and I say the same in that the footprint upstairs has not changed um, we have a, a neat indoor dining room a rooftop terrace and a bar and we certainly added those own because it was just a flat top roof uh, we have a private dining room and our main kitchen is located on the second level Welcome to our private dining room. Uh, this dining room we made, it's AV ready, so you can have a business lunch in here, you can have a birthday party, uh, whether you need something intimate, or you can even take the tables out and have a cocktail party if you'd like to. Um, we have uh, some, some of our good wine in here. In addition to that, we also have uh, another neat little wall of uh, some fun photos of Harold's over the years. And, and some of these really paid uh, homage to him right here in the neighborhood with, uh, with Reagan High School and certainly supporting the rodeo just like we do at Harold's now. Uh, he, uh, he was 
giving his time back in a telethon, and, and uh, we certainly uh, believe in community and giving back just like Harold's did. So renovating this building was quite interesting. Uh, it, uh, it was a money pit, to say the least. And uh, with all of our different elevation changes and adding on the rooftop terrace, and, uh, but it was a lot of fun and I learned a lot. And I can't believe some of the things that I know now um, that I didn't know prior to the renovation. Uh, it was interesting uh, when we, in, in opening and, and continuing to call this Harold's, uh, we have, we kept the original, three of the original Harold signs. And that was too, to, to pay homage to, uh, to what was here and appreciate the history that came before us. Uh, in fact, our retail store opened uh, uh, a couple of days before the restaurant did. And so it took a solid year to renovate in 2013. And uh, we finally opened November the 8th, uh, 2013. And uh, down here, not far from where we're sitting, we actually have a really neat double-decker uh, pizza, Brickstone pizza oven. And that was where our fresh deli section was located and coffee bar. And uh, we still have our pizza oven to this day. And uh, we sell more pizzas now than we did then. Uh, and in fact, in one of our iterations through the years when the store didn't quite work out, uh, we turned part of it into a pizza joint. And uh, I think if I'd have known a little bit more of, uh, or believed a little bit more in, in spending marketing dollars like I needed to, it, it may have had a chance. It's, it's hard to say. Uh, I do believe, though, that with all the uh, density that is here now with the apartments, our store was just about eight, to eight years too soon, and uh, especially with the alcohol laws changing because we started off this business as a, in a dry area of Houston. And uh, the, the hoops that we had to jump through just to serve alcohol uh, versus today um, are, are quite interesting and uh, it's less expensive to do business doing that today than it, than it was then. Uh, but still a lot of lessons and a lot of fun along the way and, and uh, uh, learning different things. And, and serving all types of people, which is why we're here. Well, welcome to Harold's Tap Room. This is our really neat long shotgun bar uh, where we have a variety of things on tap. Uh, we have craft beer on tap from all local breweries here in Houston. We also offer cocktails on tap, which is something a little unique. And additionally, down here in the tap room, we have eight different wines that are on tap, poured at the perfect temperature every single time. Uh, to pay homage here in the tap room, one of the neat things that we did is we made this bar top out of fabric uh, to pay homage to Harold and his really, really nice threads. And uh, a lot of people don't always notice it at first until we point it out, uh, but it's some fine, uh, fine plaid uh, that, that you would find on something that was made custom here at Harold's in the Heights back in the day. So, uh, you know, when you, when you first open a business, you know, you always hope everything will go as planned. And, uh, uh, but it doesn't. And uh, if it does go perfectly as planned, then you're just, uh, you've got your stars aligned. Um, here at, at Harold's, we were called um, the Heights Journal Store at Harold's uh, because we wanted to keep that name, but we also had the store component. So probably six months into it, you know, the writing was on the wall that the store was not going to work. And then that's when we pivoted to the pizza place because we'd always had a really good pizza. People loved our pizza and uh, uh, our pizza ovens were, were there. Uh, and then we kept uh, the things that wouldn't go bad, as I would say, uh, in really in part of the area where I am. And it turned into more housewares and things of that nature. Well, as we fumbled along with that just a little bit, uh, it became apparent we needed to shift gears again. And uh, uh, a wonderful other business owner in the neighborhood, Mary Wassef, and I had been having some conversations. And she owned a real estate company called Circa Real Estate. And so uh, we renovated. And actually, uh, Circa has their offices here now uh, in what was part of our grocery store section of, uh, of our business. And, um, and then where I'm sitting is the taproom bar. And we've had the taproom bar open for uh, over five years now and uh, really, really enjoy it being here. Um, I think some other lessons learned too along the way were, um, you know, I, spent, I had some wonderful equity partners that supported me and have still supported me to this day, which I am very grateful for. And, and I, I look forward to, uh, um, uh, you know, getting them their investment back plus. Uh, and, and, and they've certainly seen the, the iterations that we've done 
And uh, as a part of that, though, we spent too much money on renovating this building because it really was a, a cluster and it, it took a lot of time and, and resources. Um, I was fortunate enough that the gentleman that, that uh, believed in me and owned the building prior to me, just right after Harold, uh, Dan Braun is his name, and Dan and I are friends. And I learned a lot from Dan, particularly about real estate. And we kind of grew up in this building, I think, together from a, a retail building perspective. And Dan gave me the opportunity to buy the building. And so uh, I went to several of my partners, and uh, we were able to, to uh, get the building, uh, uh, buy the building from Dan. And so we've owned the building since 2016. And so now um, wonderful tenants in it, like Torchy's Tacos and Emerson Rose, which is a ladies' dress shop, um, certainly us, Harold's in the Heights, and then Circa Real Estate all make up the building now. So uh, that's been a good way to, uh, um, to uh, manage, our, manage our costs, um, being the landlord on the other side of the business, uh, particularly when it comes to little things like you know, insurance and trash and all those things that cost money that you need to negotiate. So uh, I've been, enjoyed learning a lot more about that and uh, am, am grateful for the opportunity to, to be able to continue to learn more about that, learn more about re real estate and, and getting involved in, in different projects. So uh, uh, just through the iterations of the Heights and, and just like the Heights has had to adapt, um, this business has and most businesses do. And uh, through our resiliency and all of our pivots, particularly, um, you know, these last couple years have been very interesting with the pandemic. And, and uh, who could have ever, you know, imagined that? And, uh, but, you know, you either keep moving forward and believe in people or you throw in the towel. And so we've kept moving forward. And uh, while, while some days have been easier than others, uh, we've, we've learned something. And we know that we've brought people joy and happiness uh, with every beverage and, and every uh, dish that we serve here at Harrison Heights. A couple interesting things about this room. This is our main dining room. And uh, back in the day, this was the tailor room. And Harold had 17 tailors working in this room making custom made suits. This room had just like two small peephole windows. And so we renovated it. And uh, I really wanted to save the old brick because the brick on the wall, this building is over 100 years old now. And when we started chiseling away at some of the plaster, the brick started cracking and uh, falling apart. So we had to come up with a different plan, and I was able to find a gentleman in the neighborhood. It was called Wayne's Barnwood. And we were able to get this wood on the wall. It came from a barn, and it was an 1800s cotton barn. And interestingly enough, it came from the upstate of South Carolina, from Pickens, South Carolina. So being a South Carolinian, it seemed like the right thing to do, and it was a floor, so you can see the three slats that were that are more smooth were the actual floor and then we flipped it for the tongue and groove to give it some nice color uh, then we went one step further and uh, an artist in the neighborhood named alberto bonomi made our tables out of the same wood so these are custom made tables uh, out of the 1800s wood from Pickens, south carolina uh, with uh, some some color added to it uh, and then finally in here, a really neat thing is the mirror on the wall. This mirror on the wall was actually the Harold's ladies' dressing room mirror that he had in his ladies' dressing room. Granted, the mirror was probably about as large as the department, but nevertheless, he had a fabulous mirror for ladies to try on clothes in front of. So we enjoy having that here in our main dining room every single day. Here at Harold's in the Heights, uh, we do believe in supporting our local arts, and uh, we feature a local artist, and this artist on the wall here uh, is an artist named Jim Kane, and he's very talented, and we've certainly enjoyed hanging his art here at Harold's. Uh, this particular series is uh, a lot of interesting uh, back streets and main streets uh, and iconic places throughout Texas. So uh, in the restaurant business and, and in most businesses, um, things don't magically appear or disappear, and uh, they require uh, good people to get the job done. And here at Harold's, we've been very blessed to have uh, some very long-time employees uh, with us that have, have done a terrific job um, You know, over the years. We were fortunate enough to be a top 100 restaurant four years in a row here in Houston. And uh, uh, we don't take that lightly at all. And uh, you know, as we've, as we've adjusted, our staff has adjusted as well. And we've certainly seen that shine through uh, particularly these last two years of the pandemic. 
And uh, I can tell you from uh, the guests that we have served when we served when we quickly pivoted to delivery and to go, which we had never done, uh, and our guests were leaving us notes and checking on our staff and seeing how everyone was doing. That was certainly very, very heartwarming to know that uh, that if we weren't here, that we would be missed. And uh, I think that that you know proved to me or showed me that uh, why we were doing what we were doing and and that we. We do a lot of good here at Haralds and Heights. So this is our rooftop terrace. It's a fun place for having brunch, lunch, dinner, happy hours, all kinds of fun stuff. We even have a fireplace in the wintertime. Here's one of our Harold's original signs that we have here that we kept uh, so that we could keep our name and we actually use the same logo for our business today. So in addition to uh, uh, cooking up delicious southern cuisine and, and having you know handcrafted beverages and being able to enjoy things here with within the walls at Harold's. Uh, we are also uh, a part of the fabric of the community and uh, not only the Heights but also Greater Houston and uh, just like growing up in a small town and giving back, Harold's gives back and uh, we're very active in a number of different charities uh, including the this group called the Women of Wine Charities which supports the Houston Area Women's Center to give women and, and children a safe night's sleep uh, from supporting the rodeo and all of their uh, uh, initiatives around scholarships. Uh, we also have been a part of Rebuilding Together Houston. Uh, we support uh, young entrepreneurs with uh, Lemonade Day and helping them have a place to to serve and sell their lemonade. Uh, we've also participated in, in different things uh, like this group called Summer House and we actually employ an adult with an intellectual disability and which is very very meaningful to us and, and uh, she's worked for us, her name is Allison, uh, for five years now and the impact that we have had in her life uh, has been tremendous and the impact that she's had in our lives has probably even been more tremendous. Uh, of seeing how, how uh, determined that she is every day and how much fun she has uh, when she goes to work. Uh, we're also very active you know, in, the, in the Chamber of Commerce and in different area neighborhood groups from churches and schools and, and we, we pride ourselves on that, uh, whether it be the Houston Food Bank and participating in, in Houston Restaurant Weeks or feeding first responders uh, in times of need whether it be uh, a flood like Harvey or whether it be the pandemic like we've just had. Uh, we're, we're very active not only when, when things are during rough times but also year round because uh, we understand the need and, and how important that is uh, to be a part of, of the community. Tell me about from golf to grits. Well, I, uh, uh, I'm not sure that anyone would read it other than my family or friends or people that I coerce uh, in a nice way, of course. But I do have a desire to, to write a book, and uh, I have the title. It, it's called Golf to Grits uh, because there's so many different things that happen through my golf life and on the golf course, playing the game, uh, as well as, as business and, and being in the restaurant business and certainly... Uh, uh, cooking, cooking grits now for, for a living rather than just eating them because I like to. And uh, there's a saying from where I'm from that, that the acronym for grits is Girls Raised in the South. So uh, uh, my golf to grits uh, should be a fun little story that, that uh, will, will definitely be fiction because you just simply cannot make up some of the things that have happened uh, uh, in, in golf and in grits uh, through my opportunities in the golf business and also in the restaurant business. 